All right. Thank you, Ken and Ashley, and thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. My name is Yu John, and I'm a current PhD student at the University of Pennsylvania. I will be your MC for the night. As such, I will be the one to introduce you to tonight's theme, neuroinflammation. I'll be the one to start off by talking a bit about immunology, and then I'll introduce you to our speakers for the night. But first, I want to present the schedule for tonight's events. Ashley, Kat, and I, as well as Ethan, has been doing the introductions. Following that, we will have a talk by Dr. Chris Bennett, who will be talking about designing living drugs from the brain using microglia. Following that discussion, Dr. Jennifer Orsman Murphy will be talking about a disease that happens when the brain, when the brain's immune cells attack itself, multiple sclerosis, and how we can remyelinate the brain to combat that. Finally, Dr. Elena Blanco Suarez, who is from Jefferson, will talk about the immune response when the brain suffers an ischemic stro stroke and how astrocytes can be useful in the recovery process. At 7.30, following all three presentations, the speakers will be available to answer a question and answer in a panel format. Now, let's talk about inflammation. Over the weekend, I was watering a few of my houseplants when one of my cactus was seemingly pretty angry at me and then it scratched me. Now, really, I was the one who scratched it since it didn't technically move, but that was really besides the point. The first thing that happened was, well, I was like, oh, I had a scratch, but I didn't think it was that serious. But a few hours later, much to my detriment, I saw that the area was red. Then I touched it and it was sensitive, painful, and a bit warm. These are a few of the processes of a thing known as inflammation. Outside of the ones that I mentioned, redness, swelling, pain, heat, there's also the potential for loss of function. But of course, that doesn't happen all the time, and I didn't lose function in my hand, else I wouldn't be the one to go through the side deck with you all today. But what is going on inside my body when my cut gets inflamed? Well, first, something foreign got into my body. In this case, we have things that are probably bacteria that was living on my cactus. They entered my skin through the cut. Then, when they're inside, immune cells in the area near the cut release chemicals that signal to our body that something is trying to invade. The blood vessel in the infected area dilates, and then they expand to let fluid into the area. When that happens, blood, white blood cells can roll around the blood vessel and squeeze through to attack the bacteria and that is in my cut. And so the next time you notice swelling, redness, and warmth in the area that is probably infected, notice a sign of our immune system at work. But the immune system is not always perfect. Under normal conditions, the white blood cells that our body made doesn't really attack our own cells. However, once in a while, we may have a white blood cell that meets a invader that looks really like us. Or it may be one of those white blood cells that were not removed during the process by which our body selects cells that don't attack ourselves. When either of these aberrant or improper cells are activated, they release antibodies, which end up targeting these cells in our body in addition to whatever foreign invader that looks like us. When that happens, our other white blood cells tries to kill the cells that are labeled as antibodies, and we end up killing a lot of the cells that our bodies made. When enough of this happens, you ended up with a lot of problems. And this is a process by which common illnesses like rheumatoid arthritis, type 1 diabetes, inflammatory bowel disease, and lupus form. So I just talked about the immune system in the blood, but what happens in the brain? Well, our brain has a few defense mechanisms. 
The first one is the blood-brain barrier. Epidermal cells are a bunch of tight cells that form a very tight wall that separates the bloodstream from the rest of the brain. This tight wall prevents a lot of things, such as viruses and bacteria, from easily crossing from the blood into the rest of the brain tissue. But the wall isn't entirely foolproof, and some things do get through from time to time. And this is when the second line of defense comes in, microglia. Microglial cells are the immune cells of the brain. They can roam throughout the brain, and then they eat things like dying cells, viruses, other bacteria, or other foreign materials. When activated, they can transmit information about the state of the infection to other cells. So in this way, the microglia are like the white blood cells that are mentioned in my last few slides. Astrocytes, which is another type of glial cells, are also involved in the immune response. When you look at them under a microscope, they look like tiny stars. And normally, well, I guess they always, they always provide nutrients and support to other cells in the nervous system. However, when the nervous system gets injured, such as when a nerve gets cut or maybe you have some damage, they can release chemicals that help regulate the immune response. So in a way, they control how the immune system responds to the infection and they try to <clears throat> be involved in a process called glial scarring, which happens when there's a little scar tissue that forms at the end of nervous cells that happen to be damaged. And we really don't know that much about how all these cells work out in the terms of neural injury or inflammation. And that is why this is a very active area of research. And even though this slide may seem very overwhelming, just keep in mind that the basics are this. Microglia are like the white blood cells and astrocytes are the one that help modulate the response to a host of complicated actions. So now I hope I gave you enough background information. Our speakers will expand on what I just provided in their own individual talks. Now we'll move on to the main event for the night. Dr. Chris Bennett will be starting us off by talking about the first line of immune defense in the brain, microglia. He'll talk about what they are and how they can be engineered to treat brain diseases. Dr. Orsman Murphy will follow us with a talk about autoimmune disease in the brain. She'll be focusing on one that many of you may be familiar with, multiple sclerosis, the removal of myelin from the axon. Then Dr. Elena Blanco Suarez We'll talk about what happens when the brain suffers damage through a stroke. I'm excited to be the, kicking off tonight's event by introducing Dr. Chris Bennett to you all.